joining us. Um, our, my first question is, of all of the different trolls in the troll kingdom, which troll do you relate to the most? Uh, oh, wow. Well, I would say it's a 55-way tie for first. Uh, and then in second place would be the other half of my troll. I don't want to reveal, I don't, are we allowed to reveal? I won't reveal, but I have a very uh, tight friendship with one of the trolls. Uh, we are very good friends and spend too much time close together. I would say that person slash troll was my favorite. Very nice, thank you. Of course. Wow, this is great. Everyone mutes and unmutes. It's a whole system. This is great. Oh, should I still be talking? Uh, Sorry, is Lauren here? Okay, I didn't know if I should. Hi, I'm right, I'm right here. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, it, the world could really use a good laugh right now, so we appreciate all your work and contributions. Um, my question is about your uh, creative approach to um, your character, and I read that you uh, enjoyed improvising a lot, and I wondered, what did that look like uh, in the context of animation, where you're not getting to work with other actors necessarily in front of a microphone? Well, what's really fun about it is it, there's no limits. So you can really say anything. You can make any kind of weird, strange, sassy move that may bring a very unexpected sound out of your mouth hole. So in this way, it's very easy. And there's, you, there's nothing like this difficult to make a mistake, you know, or if you want to try something new, you just say flippity flop. And they're like, great, that flippity flop makes no sense. Try something else. And it's very easy to do. With like live action, everyone has to move the cameras. This is still how they work, by the way. And so then you have to like try that. But with this, it's very fun because animation, you can experiment all the days away and it's easy and cheap. Thank you so much. Yeah, Lauren. It's like Hollywood squares with lots of breaks. That's how I like it. Is Lynette here? Yes, hi. I don't think we're hearing the names afterwards, unless it's just me. But hi. <laughs> hi, Lynette. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for joining us today. So I want to know what it feels like to be a part of this iconic franchise. I feel very, uh, I, my most favorite thing is to be a very tiny component from a very, in a very large and sassy system. So as a child, I played basketball and I was usually terrible, but it always felt great to like pass the ball into the court and then someone would make a three point dunk or something. That's what this is like. I have a very tiny piece, but I get to be inside this piece and be part of the team. It's like a very fun team of kickball, except everyone, has very long hair and plays all kinds of genres of music. And so I love that. It's a small but mighty role, so thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, it's so fun. And Amanda? Hi, Flula. Did I say that right? I've been practicing. Flula, right? Yeah, and you are Amundu? Amanda. Amanda, okay, got yes. it. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us now. Your character has like accent, just a little bit, right? Just a little bit, just a tiny bit. <laughs> I was expecting you to come. Yeah, I, well, that's what, how do you prepare for that? Cause listen, I try to do an accent and they all sound the same. So I, maybe we need some tips or, <laughs> but I just wanna know how you prepare for that. Well, the wonderful thing is, I think uh, they were like, hey, do you speak uh, German? And I said, hello, yes. And then they said, do a German accent. And I said, this is my accent already. They said, great, you're hired. And I said, great, please let me do it. And so I did it. So yes, Amanda, if they had said, hey, listen, Flula, play a uh, hillbilly countryman, I would be fired. In eight seconds, they would have terminated my employment. So I'm very happy I am German and they made me a German person or Austrian, who knows? Hickory and Dickory, who knows? No one checks passports. Anyway. Thank you. Yeah. And Amy? Hi. So 
I want to kind of piggyback on, um, we're talking about you improvising. I know that when they let you go free in, uh, um, in the booth, a lot of really good stuff ends up on the cutting room floor. So I'm wondering, do you have any favorites that didn't quite make it through some, where you were like, I was just really on and super funny there and I can't believe that didn't make the final cut? Well, first, Amy, I want to clarify, when you said, when they let you go free in the booth, <laughs> that means I'm still fully clothed. <laughs> nothing, there, nothing weird, this is just, you can say what you like, just for clarity of everybody. Right. <laughs> That's what this phrase means. Um, so, Amy, what is very fun for me is I like to just, like when you plug into the Matrix or you something, I just go into the booth and then I say a lot of crazy things and then I have amnesia. They give you a bagel or a cupcake afterwards the sugar rush uh, eliminates all memories and I do not remember anything. So I can tell you, as I watched the film, I had no memories of the things they had recorded. It was a fun surprise. I was like a spectator who had no clues. Oh, and thank I was you. Closed, closed during oh, recording. Just, right. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks. Yes. And Christine? Hello. Hi, Christine. Hi, okay, so kind of touching on what Amy just uh, spoke about in the, the booth or the box, uh, bloopers are a favorite part of like every movie that I watch and you and your character are very funny. So do you have any moments while you're like improv that you just like burst into laughter? Like would there be bloopers? Like tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I, so as I was watching it, uh, there was a phrase I said that, I know that I usually say this phrase if I drop like an ice cream snack or if I look at my refrigerator and I hit my head on it. And so I knew that this was something, I don't remember what happened in the booth, but they used a weird uh, accidental phrase that I like to say when accidents happened and they used it. So they actually used my bloopy, who knew? Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah. Sarah? Hey, so my 11 year old was showing me your IMBD page and he was obsessed. He was like, oh my God, he was the voice in this. Oh my God, he was the voice in this. Oh, I watched this episode. So he wants to know, how do you know what a character sounds like? Do you see a picture of it and you figure out the voice from there? Do you read the script and make it up in your head? What's your process? That's really fun, Sarah. What a great question from your son. From my son, yeah. Oh, I like it. Nice work, uh, son of Sarah. Uh, <laughs> I, I can tell you, it's uh, a little bit you don't know. I think sometimes it is if they show you uh, what you would look like, sometimes this can help you. But other times in projects, they just say, hey, this person is these personalities. And then you do it. And then they show you a photo and you are so wonderfully happy because it does not match. And sometimes this is the best. You know, I love like a tiny seahorse that sounds like a drill sergeant. Like, I love this. And you would not think, oh, I should be a very rude and angry seahorse. Because everybody knows seahorse is very kind. So yeah, it depends. I guess it's always different. Thank you, son of Sarah. What a wonderful question. Yes, his name is Zachary, and he's in the background saying you're welcome. <laughs> Shout out Zachary Newcomb, yes. <laughs> and Bert? So I was watching some of your, well, your most recent, uh, the quarantine homework videos that you did to help out with math. And I hate math so much, like so much I married an accountant, so I didn't have to do anything that has to do with math. Wow. Okay. This is very, this is a very long way to go to just hate arithmetic. Okay. Yes. Okay. But, okay. Sorry. That's my kid who's in, in here. So my question is, what is your favorite kind of math to do? Because you do really complicated stuff. Yes. So what happened? Was that a submarine next to you? What is happening there? Oh, this is this, da, da, da. this is my daughter. Da, da. Okay. I'm going. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> she just left. She just yes. announced it and then she did it. That's very, I like this. Oh, I no. told her not to be distracting. I want to be in it. I want to Okay, what do you, oh, my favorite of the maths? Yes. yes. <laughs> I would say I love geometry very much, Bert, because I like to see things and then I can just draw it and make it sassy. Many maths are like, oh, just do it because it sounds good, or I believe in division. Like, oh, what? <laughs> draw me something, make a circle. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. 
And Kathy. Hi, thank you for being here. So I wanted to know, are you in real life a yodeler? And if you are, what's your favorite yodel? <laughs> is, that, is it called a yodel? Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, so I think everyone is a yodeler if they want to be, just like everyone's a DJ. Do, do you own <laughs> things that plays music? Great, you're a DJ, have a diploma. Uh, my favorite thing to yodel, I would say, sometimes it's like early Madonna, you know, I think it's very fun. You know, this used to be my playground, very fun to yodel, you know, or sometimes Vogue. If you yodel Vogue, let me tell you, the neighbors will complain. So can you yodel a little bit? Because I'm a screamer. I'm always screaming in my son. So if you can yodel a little bit, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that was uh, Credence Clearwater Revival's Susie Q. That was awesome. Thank you. Tessa? Hi, how are you? Hi, Tessa. Hello. I want to know, it's, it's like sort of a spoiler, but like, so how did it feel to, you're kind of a villain. You're a little bit, a little bit of a villain in this. How did it feel to be the villain against such loved characters like Poppy and Branch? Well, you know, in normal human times, I'm, I'm friendly and nice. So to just be like very rude, but in a safe way, it's, it's a cartoon, it's animation. So the rudeness will only go to a certain length. It's very fun just to be kind of rude, but also silly, like silly rude. What a wonderful combination. So I love it because I cannot do this in a real way because that's rude. This way I get paid for rudeness. So it's fun. Thank you. Yeah. Kimberly? All right, so hi, my question is, um, what do you like best of all of the roles that you've played in Hollywood, on screen, um, you know, the live stuff you've done and the voiceover, like what is your favorite and why? That's so like if, if you purchased for me a box of Trader Joe's Vanilla Jojo's and there are 42 in there, if you said, select your favorite sandwich cookie, Kim, I would say this is rude. They're all very delicious, but I would recommend putting it in the refrigerator, waiting for two hours, and then it's a nice, it creates a nice chunky, crunchy snack. Uh, but to answer your question in a direct way, which I am not able to do, as you know, um, all of these roles are so very fun and always are very weird and unexpected and sassy ways. And trolls, of course, was very fun because they just said, please, enter this room, say some things. They did not show me a photo until I started to record some words, just a little bit. And then it was even more fun. It's like if you have some chili and then they sprinkle some like cumin in there. What? It was like that. Thank you. Yeah. We're coming back around again with Megan. First of all, you're absolutely a joy. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> um, so I'd love to know, piggybacking off of your favorite past roles, is there any roles in the future that you would love to play? Is there a special character that you have in mind, a special franchise that you would love to be a part of, anything like that? Yeah, uh, thanks, Megan. Uh, so one dream for me is uh, my most favorite film is Die Hard, uh, which is a film with a, a Bruce Willis. And there is a bad guy named Hans Gruber in the movie. My, my dream is that Gruber has a, has a prequel. I mean, Die Hard has a prequel. And it's called Gruber. And it's like just two hours before Die Hard starts. So that's my dream, is to play Hans Gruber in the Die Hard prequel. And as for franchises, listen, all the franchises. I am here. I am ready. I have a few requirements. As, as Amy said, I would love to just be free. But again, this means covering everything, but then still being free in all of the franchises. Well, I hope you get it one day. Thank you. Me too, Megan. Thank you. And Lauren? Hi, Flula. I'm also laughing. I can't help myself. Um, <laughs> well, you're uh, very original, and I was curious. Um, you, you are original, but did you have any influences or, or inspirations growing up or currently that you might like to share? I love it. You are so original, but... But! <laughs> there's there's, 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 <laughs> yeah, there's no, nothing new under the sun. <laughs> no, it's all, this, and I agree with this so much. Uh, yeah, so I think everything can be very inspiring to me. Uh, as a child, I would, I would watch uh, bowling 
for no reason. There's like German bowling television, old World Cup soccer matches, uh, Will Ferrell, you know, Glenn Miller, big band music. No, this not, all the things have something that can like inside your brain spark maybe a nice fun idea. I have a neighbor and he likes just to blow the leaves very loudly every two days for eight minutes. We don't need it, there are no leaves, but he still blows them every place. I think this will inspire a fun techno song for me. He doesn't know this, but still it's inspiring. Thank you. Of course. Lynette? So you're obviously not rude in real life because you've been amazing and you're funny, but you do play those characters well, like in Pitch Perfect 2, just, just saying. Yeah. Um, but how do you prepare for an animated character versus preparing for a live action role? Yeah. Well, I will say, so in the live action time, you have some people that are, that are with you inside in the real moment. So if, if I'm rude in this movie, if I'm rude to Rebellious Wilson, well, she can be very rude to me in return and then we can have a nice little fun, you know, who knows what this is, some exciting conflicts. But in the animation, you kind of are just doing it inside your own brain and creating these things as you go. Just like when you are a child in the backseat of the automobile as mama's driving and the cars are coming the other way, I was always pretending I was a man jumping over the cars as they did that. That makes no sense. But I guess, Lynette, I would say, when the people are there with you, you can learn some things and do new things. But when they are not, you just invent it all in your brain like a crazy person. Thank you. Yeah. And Amanda? So as son of Sarah's mentioned, you know, you've been in tons of stuff, right? And a lot of animated films. I wanted to know what draws you to that. And you can, look, Flula's, you can't say because they let you free in the booth. You can't, no, you can't use that one, Flula's. <laughs> but oh. what draws you to do an animated versus, and wh which one is your favorite also? I'd like to. Uh, so two reasons for animated. I will use another answer, but not the freedom answer, just so we know. Uh, number one, it's one of these projects where you are such a small piece with all of these wonderful geniuses working. So in Trolls, there's all of the writers and the animators and, the, and directors and all of these people working for thousands and thousands of hours. And I just walk in there, I have a, a Sprinkles Otis Spunkmeyer muffin, do something for an hour and leave while all of these people create this magic and I have a small piece of this. So I love this with animation. Other films do this too, but animation is so extreme. I spend so little time and then I get all of this credit. I don't really deserve it. All of these people did all of this stuff. So that's the one thing. The other reason for animation, which is fun, is it's so easy. I can wear anything I like. It's, I can have, I can do five different things in the same location, a recording booth. I only require some latrine breaks and water. And this is so wonderful. So I like this. Those are my two reasons. Thank you. Of course. Amy? Okay, so I'm going to kind of piggyback on the, um, we know, I, I am there for you in Gruber. I actually want it to be animated. I think that would be perfect. Oh, I love this. Thank you, Amy. But, um, but also, I want to kind of hop over to, um, so we talked about your, like, dream role in a movie. I want to hop over to YouTube. You do so many amazing collaborations on your YouTube channel. Okay, I want to know who is your dream collaboration on YouTube? Wow. Uh, my dream collaboration. This is, well, there are many of these. Uh, one man, this is, may not make some sense, uh, but there is a man called uh, Destin, and he, his channel is called Smarter Every Day. He is a giant, wonderful uh, scientist man who likes to do things in very slow motion. We have worked together one time, but I know you say dream. My dream is let's work together two times. That's a dream. I did a slow motion beatboxing video with him, but my dream now is to fly to his, his home and do the 1812 overture with cannons in slow motion. Awesome. Yeah, why not? Absolutely. Christine? Hi again. So you have such amazing energy and are so talented. I just want to know, because I'm a big believer in like self-care and I teach also um, 
of like other than blogging and it's really good to ground yourself and to like kind of have that quiet time so what do you do like in your personal time to kind of find that 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 time i love it i have a uh and a, a thank you journal. So every day I write three things that I am uh, uh, grateful for every morning. Uh, they are usually, there are, some of these are stupid, like thank you for not breaking my bones yesterday during that silly hop that I did over the stairs. I uh, thank you for the orange juice. Some of these are very silly, who cares? But they are real, I'm still fe feeling some grateful times for this. So this is number one. Number two, I like to just stare outside at like animals and trees. Oh, that's so nice. And I do journaling too, and my, I'm teaching my son the same thing. So thank you. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, let's do it. All the sons. Lots of offspring uh, shout outs here. This is great. <laughs> Sarah? Hey, so I want to bring it back to the movie a little bit. Uh, there's so many lessons that we can take out of it. Courage, inclusivity, acceptance. What is one of the biggest lessons you got from the movie? Well, you touch on it. Uh, I like that the film it shows a, a large, wonderful um, diversity of genres, of characters, and a wonderful acceptance of all of these things. Uh, I think now, in more than perhaps ever time in, in history, it's fun to really bring forward these kind of values. And so I love that. I think that was a wonderful uh, way to communicate these. And also, there's some dope music in there, too, which I also enjoy very much. Agreed. And Bert. So um, I'm going to take it away from the movie. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> but I want to know, um, I used to live in Germany. So I want to know what is the German food that you miss the most? Where did you live? Uh, Ramstein. Ramstein, or yes. Ramstein, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So air, air base. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, I've been there. Uh, oh. so, yeah, yeah. Okay, my most favorite is um, it's, a, it's a Linzer Torte. It's a it's a tort. Uh, I think you call them torts in here as well, but I think it's also like a law thing, like torts. You don't uh, tort reform. It's about pies. It's a pie that has it has this on the top. Not this is lattice. not the La Yeah, exactly. Not mm -hmm. lettuce. You said lettuce. No. No lattice. <laughs> lattice. No lettuce on this pie. It's not a tort. Yeah, yeah. So no lettuce. Lots of whatever that you said, and some jam inside. It's got some jam, some cinnamon. It's like Oma makes. I love it. That's what I miss. Yeah. Wait, Rammstein, sorry, Bert, oh, what do you, I almost called you Rammstein. Bert, oh, what do you miss food in Germany? Um, I miss um, Schwenkbrot. Mm. Do you oh. know what that is? It's like a breaded, Malz yeah. Schmalzbrot? Uh, I think it was called uh, shrank brot. We used huh? to get it at the pool. At the pool? They serve bread at the pool? Yeah, it was really good. Nice. Some and pool. And pomme frites with mayonnaise. Pomme frites. Mm -hmm. French fries, everyone. Yes, pomme frites. Nice. With curry. Kathy? Yeah, sorry, go. Sorry. sorry, Kathy, you're next. I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. What was. For, um, please forgive me. Your no. character, what is it you would like um, your audience goers to learn from your character and what is it that you loved about your character? Ah, I love that my character was uh, very small because I am of above average heights and weights. So it was very fun to play like a tiny thing that can be loud and energetic. Uh, and then, oh, sorry, I forgot the other question. What did I learn? Well, yeah, what would amazing. what would you like uh, your audience goers when they're watching when the kids are watching it? What is it you would like people the kids to learn from your character? Oh, I said it's very. It sometimes it can be fun to be sassy. You don't always have to be super friendly. Like be a little sassy. You know, it can be fun. And Tessa. Okay, I have kind of a weird question. Wait. So, my seven-year-old daughter begged me to ask this question. Okay. She really wants to know if you had any input in being the butt. Oh, it, <laughs> if I was the, yeah, did I have an option with the booty? Yeah. Well, Tessa, I did not, but I was very much like, please bootify me. <laughs> please make me, because in my life, to be the booty of a joke is the best. I would always want to be the joke butt. So I'm so happy that in this, I was literally an anus. It's very fun. Thank you. Yes. And Kimberly. 
All right. So I think this is ending thing. So I want to know what are you binge watching or how are you passing the time during all of this quarantine? Yeah. Like anything we should watch or listen to? Uh, I don't know. Should You shouldn't listen to me probably. I have some very, uh, my recommend, they're not recommendations. I will only answer what am I <laughs> Uh, so I am watching uh, lots of NBA Who is the Greatest Player of All the Times videos. Just watching those on YouTube. I'm watching a show called Atlanta, uh, which I was just now catching with. So I very much love this show, very much like Keith Stanfield. What? This man, I mean, genius. Uh, oh, and also a German show on Netflix called Dork. D-A-R-K, hard to say, but it's like a Stranger Things meets... West Germany or East Germany, just Germany. It's, I say West because it's 86, so it's pre-wall. But anyway, yeah, those are some things I'm watching. Thanks. Yeah. All right, great. I think that that's it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.